Ender. It's trying to do its thing. Uh, okay, we are on YouTube. Should be back on Rumble. There we are. Um, yeah, and that's the thing. We've got FPV on today. Um, he doesn't show doesn't show his face so oh i'm hearing another where am i getting that echo one second echo's gone is it okay cool, cool. yeah we lost you for a second there Okay, y'all hear me? Oh, we have FPV on and I'm still getting an echo. This is so weird. I'm turned off. Okay. Check, check. And FPV's muted. <laughs> yeah my mic works hello okay cool i think i got it figured out sorry guys um hey it's great to be back with y'all um yeah we're on rumble youtube um uh, odyssey unite and false book <laughs> today um let me just pull the, the this back up real quick i uh, having a couple little technical issues let me get this fired up. It's good to it'll, it's good to have you back on FPV, and and I don't know if we're going to be able to see you today because we don't have a graphic up for you. Um, so. Well, I can yeah, assure I miss you, your usual I can graphic. You, it there. is me. <laughs> I don't know what it's vanished. It was there last time, wasn't it? Yeah, one second here. But yeah, it's definitely me. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's you. FPV, so uh, awesome to have you back. This is going to be fun. Been wanting to reconnect with you for a long time here. Yeah, it's took, uh, I mean, when was the last one? Two years ago? It was a while ago, wasn't Has it? Has it really been that long? It seems Crazy. that long to me. Yeah, a few years. Life's flying by really fast. Speaking of fast, how deep do you want to go and how quick do you want to get there? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I've, I've got it figured out now, guys. I'm going to go ahead and hit record and start this bad boy up. Here we go. And boom, we're back for another episode of AlphaCast. I'm Mike Winner, and I'm here as always with the intrepid Dr. Bear Paul Lando coming to you live intrepid. and direct from the great state of Jefferson, where freedom reigns supreme, here on a rainy Thursday, actually. Um, actually, we could use the rain. It's, I haven't had it in a, in a bit, so happy to not have to turn on water yet for the gardens, which we're getting all prepped over here. And I know Bear and Deb and the team over there have been quite busy getting everything ready for spring. Uh, our favorite time of the year, Bear, huh? Yeah, uh, actually, we're looking forward to the rain today because the last two days we had a water issue. We found a leak in our pump system from the river to the tanks, and we lost all the water in the tanks, and everything needed uh, water because everything was getting dry just in the first few days of the sun. So the rain saved us, and I think I got our water system fi uh, fixed. And there goes Mike. He just ran out of the room. <laughs> Here he is. Yeah, sorry, Azure uh, showed up today. They de delayed oh. uh, Azure Market, and so my uh, neighbor was nice enough to bring it. Um, so I'm going to have to go help him real quick. Um, but uh, what I'll do, actually, is I'll do the quick intro here, and then I'll let you take it from here, Bear. So uh, how, sto how stoked are we? We have FPV Angel back. We were just saying before I hit record, man, time has been flying. Like I think it was two years ago that we had him on um, uh, and uh, to go deep into all their work. So it's great to have have him back and um, get caught up on everything here. Um, AlphaCast has entertained a good number of brilliant guests from differing backgrounds and perspective. 
in an ongoing quest to unveil the authentic design and function of this earthly realm. This knowledge was never intended to be hidden or overly complex, as the truth never is on either count. Flat Earth investigation has been a gateway to the truth on so many levels, but this unfortunate term oversimplifies a diverse body of research and is employed by orthodoxy to discredit anyone daring to cross the boundaries of accepted thought. FPV Angel represents an international group of brilliant investigative researchers decoding the true reality of the realm that we call home. Through perhaps the most advanced research the world has ever seen, FPV Angel will further elaborate on the angelic particle matrix and highlight decodes from scriptures, the Nazca lines, Enoch, sacred geometry, geopetro hieroglyphs, Colosseums, pyramids, angels, sun halos, lunar waves, quakes, and volcanoes. Our discussion will include what the luminaries are and how they work, and the 400-year resets responsible for all of the historic destruction via tsunamis and mud floods, etc. Including our cross-reference with real-world data, history, holy books, and prophecies. FPV Angel states, Quote, we are not affiliated with any other group, community, entity, world map, or model as we work on our own map and model without any external influence, which we have been proving over time. Definitely, if you're not subscribed to their YouTube channel, hop over there uh, after the show and subscribe and dive into all of the amazing content on there. Uh, that, sh that link is in the show notes below. And um, I'm not sure he'll, we'll let um, FPB let us know if they're on any other, anywhere else besides YouTube, but I love to all the breakdowns on Walter Russell and everything they have in there. Uh, Bear Lando, take it away, my friend. Okay, go get your groceries. We missed a cutoff for Azure today. Otherwise, uh, we that would be over in Gasky with you picking up our stuff right now. So FPV, hey, thank you, thank you for being back with us. It's been way too long. And uh, you've been uh, long my favorite decoder. You know, we've had a lot of uh, folks on that approach the, you know, trying to figure out what the nature of our realm is from many different perspectives. Is it a simulation? Is it a construct from some evil entity that's controlling us? And, you know, there's all sorts of theories. And, you know, a lot of people give a lot of good evidence to back things up. Uh, you, I feel, have the most comprehensive approach. And what I like is that um, you come at it from so many different angles that it allows us to just uh, pretty much, uh, you know, view and make up our own minds. And also, uh, as Mike already mentioned, you have a lot of um, information decoding Walter Russell, which is one of my favorite topics. So uh, welcome and thank you for being here with us again. Hello there. Hello, Mike, even though he's missing. <laughs> yeah, pleasure to be here, guys, and a pleasure to represent this research, very important research. Um, on the subject of Walter Russell, we'll start with Walter Russell's work. And, you know, yeah, right, in, you have to look around, you have to look at everything. You know, that's what we did. We, you have to analyze everything and where does it fit in. And eventually, you know, over the past, what, eight years now that we've been researching this, we can, you know, look at subjects and know if it fits in with this or not, or, you know, decode it a bit deeper, or, or point you in the right direction and let someone else decode it further, because, you know, there is more decodes deeper embedded within this. We're just scratching the surface of all these areas that are all connected to help us see how Absolutely. this is really working. Uh, yeah. I should probably I should um, probably, probably give you viewers a warning here because you know what they're going to hear is it's going to be my it's going to melt brains this information. It's not the easiest information yes. for a lot of people to comprehend and actually uh, you know get a grasp on. You know <laughs> it could probably drive you insane. I'm you know I'm glad they've given us a sense of humour. <laughs> We've got a sense of yeah. humour. You're gonna you're gonna need it to get through all of this. Well, our audience uh, loves to have their minds melted, myself included. And, you know, uh, Mike and I did a little in-house uh, presentation last time. Uh, you know, we don't really push our products or, or, or promote ourselves that much, but we gave a little glimpse inside my lab and used it as an excuse to talk about what we uh, talk about frequently, which is alchemy. And alchemy to me is just science. But in that, we described that... You know, it's not just about relying on the great luminaries of the past, you know, Walter Russell included, 
uh, because they had their decodes at the time. But, you know, life has progressed and it's really incumbent on this generation, all of us here included, to take the information and go further. So even though I'm a great fanboy of people like Walter Russell, I don't take anything as gospel or so, you know, Wanda suggested I think anybody had all the answers. And in fact, I have a few ideas of my own that deviate somewhat from some of those folks, Steiner and Russell and so forth. So, uh, again, what I really enjoy about your work is you hit it from so many angles. And, uh, you know, you have such a comprehensive look at things that, you know, your videos are like university courses in and of themselves the other thing i'd like to just tell our audience before we get started here is that don't forget practical experience i think there's a great tendency these days for people to listen to a lot of information read books and so forth and speculate and and intellectualize but uh at this point in my life and actually my whole life what i really enjoy is actually doing things you know take this knowledge but then go out and you know, uh, apply it to your athletic training, to your, um, you know, your work out in the garden, uh, or just when you're in a walk in the woods, you know, see all of these things that we're going to be talking about today with your own eyes and just start really discerning for yourself. So what we're talking about is half the equation and the other half is all of us starting to do things and uh, you know we need to be more practically oriented as time goes on uh, to get through this rough transition period that we're all going through so uh, take it away uh, where you're about to go before i interrupted you there yeah it's not to me or to mike <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I mean, I would love to just dive right into everything that you guys have been updating us on since we had you there last time. We were talking about Operation Rainbow Warrior, I believe. That's what someone mentioned in the chat. Was that what we were calling it? But basically, you're asking for folks to um, look at rainbows and uh, other objects in the sky. And we were you were explaining how that relates to the angel particle matrix and all of that. Um, do you have any updates for us from there and any other, um, I don't know, it's interesting just also <laughs> just talk on this because there's been certain uh, videos that have gotten really uh, viral of late of entities and objects and projections and all sorts of things in the sky. Uh, I don't know if you saw the one there of that supposedly out of an airplane where it looked like a figure almost was rotating in the sky. Some were saying it was like an angel in the sky. Uh, I was always, I was curious what your thoughts are on on those sort of uh, things. I have, <laughs> I have seen that, yes, and to me it looked like CGI. Um, I, I, you know, I did analyze a lot of CGI type work before it even came to this flat Earth arena. Um, I was noticing it pop up and looking at ways it could be done because you know I can I can do with things like that myself if I wanted it using a computer and some three D program. It's it's they've made it quite easy to fake things like that. So you've got to be careful, you know, and, and it's getting better and better, all, almost on a NASA standard. <laughs> but yeah, yeah you know, I would say almost we've gotten I would to the say point. be careful, you know, take it with a pinch of salt unless it can be taken further. That's what I like about our research. You know, we could we I look for endpoints. If I can find an endpoint, you know, like you know, as a proof, you've got to get to the end of the subject to get a proof. Otherwise, it just goes nowhere and people lose interest. So you've got to, you know, that with our research, we've got it that, you know, down to the rainbows now. We can pinpoint the rainbows as the location of this technology. Now, for your viewers that probably haven't watched us before, the, the technology we're talking about is what we're calling the creator's glory. It's technology below your feet, and it's everywhere across this plane of various scale. The rainbows are its signature, because you're going to notice there's different scale and size of rainbows. And that's all to do with all the mechanism, mechanisms of all the, how all this works. And what we're asking people to do with Operation Rainbow Warriors, GPS mark the center of where your rainbow is, your local rainbow or any rainbow that you've got access to. GPS mark its center, then give us an estimate of, in diameter of its scale from, if you, you know, you picture the rainbow, where its ends are coming down, pinpoint the center, you've then, you've then got a circle of where the rainbow's arc roughly is. That there is one of these, the, the signature of one of these technologies. Now the technologies man's calling it is a particle accelerator. 
The particles that are accelerating aren't in a tube as they would lead you to believe. They're actually accelerating particles in the ether above them. This is what they're really doing. This is how this technology functions. It's, it's accelerating the ether. And this is on a local level, a national level, and an international level, because these things are everywhere, as you're going to find when you start mapping your rainbows and seeing where they are. And there's other ways you can, you know, get to get to this as well by using the star forts, castles, cathedrals, things like this, the, the churches. They're, they're all markers for where this technology is. Because uh, what we've found, you know, since the Roman invasion a few thousand years ago, just after a reset when it was quite easy for them to do, mind, um, the, and this is when they introduced religion and then royals started appearing and then the globe started appearing. So, you know, what have they got us actually believing in? Because it surprises me now how many people have turned their back on their ancestors. To, 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 you know, now, you find, now you're finding out the line about the shape of this world. It's not just the shape of the world, it's the line about. The line about everything that's involved in hiding this technology. That's where we're really at today. And this is why all these agendas are taking place. You know, what we're discovering is, is this is the why of everything going wrong in this world. It's all to hide this. So, you know, who do we speak to about this? We, we have no idea who to speak to about this. Who, who do we take this to? Your, your, your local police officer? No, not really, no, because they are your police and your military work for these people. So, you know, you're left with doing what we're doing, uh, outputting videos and hoping people get the big picture and piece it together and start sharing it elsewhere. Eventually, you know, I would I would love to speak to a tribal leader. Um, if anyone can organize that, that would be fantastic because, you know, with their prophecies, the Rainbow Warriors, it's a prophecy you're going to find is actually relating to the cycles of this world, which, you know, we get into the reset there. The cycles for, of this world come with cycles of a reset that we've found happens every 400 years. It follows the Monda minimum cycle. And the previous one was with the 1600s reset. And the pandemic of those times was the Black Death. Because remember, they, want, they don't want you to see this spectacle you're going to see in the sky. You've already seen parts of it now with the sun halo. And you know, you've got the realisation of these rainbows. So the rainbow warriors from prophecy... It, what it's really telling you is that at some point in time, people will figure out what the rainbows actually are, and that just happens to be us. So, you know, there's no ego or anything here. We're just researchers. I realise the implications of that, and we'll take it further because it's us that's discovering it, and we can take it further. We can discuss how this technology works. And Walter Russell's work is a brilliant introduction to it, believe it or not. Um, can you see what I'm sh uh, screen sharing here? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Right, I'll leave this playing. I'll leave it muted because we're just going to talk about what's in this this uh, video that Sandra's husband made. Yeah, I'm just thinking of, of rainbows and uh, like the Trolls movie. What are they telling us there? Because you literally have the rainbow trolls. They're like a <laughs> sub, right? They're like trolling us. <laughs> literally. Oh, yeah. Right, what you're looking at here now. This would be a top-down view of a rainbow site. Right, so say the rainbow is right smack bang in the center of there, the GPS coordinates, and this is its diameter you're looking at here. So this circle is what's taking, this is what's taking place under every rainbow, depending on the configuration of it and the speed it is running at, because the speed it accelerates, which I'm, I'm assuming it's the mercury that's being accelerated around these tubes within in these halos. Now, you, you know from Walter's work, the first three octaves, nothing happens. Well, okay, we're starting on the outside of this circle. Now, start spiraling round. Pick a direction, doesn't really matter at the moment. Spiral round three times, and you'll find that now starts getting into a tighter spiral and a cone. It starts creating a cone shape. So after the third octave of that cone, thing, all these elements and gases and everything on this chart start being produced. So every local angel is creating everything you see on this screen right now, locally to you, on various scales. You know, like I said, some are large, some are small, some are surprising how small some of these rainbows actually are. But what's taking place here, you know, you picture the spiral coming towards you. This is a top-down view, remember, so the spiral's coming up from below ground. And as it tightens to the center, these are the octaves Walter Russell's work is actually relating to. Now, it's showing, what it's showing you there is this is now nature. Well, now nature we've decoded to be 
this technology that manages our nature, it creates our nature. Uh, it, pre it produces all the gases and everything on you, you see on this chart. It, well, that's why Walter done it in a circle like this. He obviously knew this was a localized event and it's happening everywhere on various scales. And it makes most, more and more sense. As you start spiraling that in, you're going to get your oxygen, all your gases, everything. All these elements, is they're being compressed into existence by this technology. This is how it works. Now, that's only half of it. There is another half because there's a duality taking place here and it's, it's, an, it's an effect of electromagnetism. Once you introduce electric into this system, uh, magnetism and electricity are 90 degree in opposition. So the, electric, the electrical part of this has got no, no choice but to be elevated into the heavens. And the diameter of these halos, which you're looking at on screen there, that's the diameter of one of these halos there, that determines the altitude that projection is being elevated to in the sky. And it's got a reverse um, flow to what this one has here. So what you see in the sky coming down from a tornado, or, you know, pick a tornado, this is what's taking place. This is the other half taking place. So the top half of it, the cone of the top half coming down, that's, this is Adam. This is Adam's cone. Eve's cone goes up from the ground. Adam's come down from the sky. This is the duality of nature. It's these two that are creating and spiraling their pressure waves together to create. This is what this technology is actually doing. And I would call them atmosphere processes. Like I said, they produce all the gases, the oxygen, everything. So, you know, we were told oxygen was being produced by trees. Well, I don't think it is, not according to this chart and, and what we're discovering ourselves. So I would put the tree theory aside for a while because I don't think that's ever been proven. To me, it's just an assumption now or an excuse to take you away from this more important work of what's actually creating all of this. Now, you can go into scriptures as well with this. You know, it does say the rainbows won't appear for a year. I'm not saying holy books are wrong. I'm saying what's happened with holy books. This technology has been personified. So you're Adam and Eve, you know, they, they're just male and female names. It's, they, they, it's been personified to help you explain how it works. You've got a positive and a negative there. So they're using sex as, as this version of polarities. That's, what's, that's what you're going to start decoding when you start looking at sacred geometry. There's always, always a male and a female. So it's, all they do really is change the name. So this one here, say, say, that, say this one here was local to you. And it was called Joseph and Mary or some name like that. Jesus and Mary even, you know, pick a name, a male and female name. This is this is the how it works. So you'll find there's always a, a male and female character involved. And this this goes back throughout time, that you know, recorded time of these these great names in history or you know to do with creation. But it's actually detailing how this technology works, and there's no actual mention of the creator themselves that I'm picking up on. Now, Walter, uh, not Walter, um, what's his name? Mauro Bellino. He came out in 2017. He's a Vatican translator. And surprising to me, he came out and said angels are robots, you know, suggesting technology. And that holy books aren't, they're not putting it into holy books what he's translating. So there's one person that would advise you have a listen to. But don't forget, this guy still thinks sin, globe, aliens, kind of nonsense. You know, it's not his fault he hasn't done the research. So ignore that part of it and apply it to a flat earth model and something a bit more special, what he's actually telling you. And it will tie in with our work. Now, there's a scientist called Bob Green, yeah? um, he's on. he's got a channel called MFMP. He actually works on this technology and he's having his own revelations currently. And, you know, what he's, I told him, what he's showing is proving what we're saying. So you can go and look at Bob Greenie's Green, channel on MFMP, it's called his channel. Martin uh, Fleischmann Memorial Project is what it stands for. So this is a man working with this technology and he's seeing what we see, we're seeing now. So there's, you know, there's a couple of references, a real scientist and you've got a very real Vatican translator, both telling you this technology has always been here. <laughs> and this is what exactly what we've been seeing. So to help you guys, I think that was probably the best, you know, way of showing you what is local to you. If you can find your local angels, find the rainbows, locate them, pinpoint them, 
And you could actually use this to go gold prospecting or anything you want. Because if you notice on this chart, you've got a lead and gold isn't far from it. So this is the configuration you're going to find in the ground. You're going to have a lead mine. There's going to be a gold mine and there's copper mines and, you know, so on and so forth. This is what they're actually mining everywhere. So it's, it's amazing information to know. <laughs> you know, I'm talking to some things here I've never even told people before. So you get, you're the first to hear of that part of it. Um, so... Walter Russell uh, just gives a great a simplified analogy of playing a pipe organ, uh, you know, to describe everything we're looking at here. And that is you're using the foot pedals just simply to create pressure differentials. So as you're talking about the atom cycle, I think, uh, which is compressing data uh, by creating higher levels of pressure, then that's uh, eventually what we see on the ground. And of course, when that enters that, um, you know, that fourth to fifth octave that we uh, get by uh, entering the helium portal, we'll say, uh, you know, that creates uh, more the south pole that is precipitating, uh, which is actually a transmutation process. But if we take away, you know, fancy terms like transmutation and get a little bit esoteric, all we're doing is creating higher pressure that, uh, again, you know, creates that precipitation of matter and then the Eve cycle or, uh, or vice versa is constantly radiating it at the same time. Is that kind of what you're describing here? And, and yes. what it all goes yes. uh, down to is sound. And of course, in the old um, alchemical texts, they talk about the etheric levels and, and the water element, you know, which is that third tier down and just a very simplified version is uh, what they also call the sound ether because that's when that compressed sound actually becomes matter. So, you know, all this really does have practical value and it's not that hard to understand if we can get rid of all the other stuff we've been taught. Yeah, yeah, it's just getting rid of all the garbage that people keep attaching to things. You know, you'll find that, you'll find good information then someone's added something else that, oh, I think it's doing this, but, you know, they're totally wrong though. I don't blame them. You know, you've got to go down these avenues exploring, haven't you? So it either works or it doesn't, you'll find, you know, if there's no endpoints, you know, we put it on the shelf to look at later and move on. But that doesn't happen a lot, really. Um, as an example well, here, look, yeah. the, these two spirals here, see these two here, that would be like the top and the bottom of, say, a tornado. You know, the, it, w w what you'll notice is there's a floor goes one way and there's another floor comes the opposite direction through the other. Can you see that? Yeah, you probably notice it more with tornadoes. You'll see a stream coming mm -hmm. down, but you can also see one inside it going back up. Now, that void, you know, because it's forcing it up and down, there's a void there and it's got to be filled. And this is counter rotating, rotating with inside each other. This is what's creating what we would call alternating current. This is where the, you know, this is what Tesla discovered. This is all, you know, we're surrounded by alternating current. I'm pretty sure Walter realized that as well, but it looks like he let, you know, Tesla use that one. So we're looking at alternating current, you know, with an ether being caused by this technology. So, you know, what it's doing is manipulating the ether and making it move, exciting the ether, making it move. Particle. Now, you know, we, you get a lot of arguments about atoms and particles and things in the atmosphere. You know, whatever you want to call these things, you know, Walter would call them light. Or light, you know, light entities, would make, even that would make sense because they, they're just different uh, polarities of things that are going to be excited by this technology because, you know, they've got alternating current flowing around them and it's exciting them and they're all being, like, spiraled into into something you recognize, you know, like lightning and things like that. It's create. This is how it's, this technology actually creates. It's compressing things together. You know, you're right, we were, like Walter's work, it's all down to comp compression. Then you get the fusion point. And then it expands. And of course, with that, you get division and multiplication, which, you know, it's, it's making more and more. So it's a never ending cycle of free energy is what you're looking at. This is where electricity really comes from. This is how this technology does it. A man can replicate that by making like a Walter Russell motor or a pyramid. <laughs> the pyramid's doing that exactly the same process. If you look at the pyramid with the, um, the niches, they're no different to an antenna. You know, you look at an antenna, they're just pressure zone. It's going to emit at these pressure zones. That's what, exactly what's taking place. Yeah. And this is where this is where red shift and blue shift actually comes from. Because you know, yeah, I was going to ask you of, about the color of the red blue. Glad yeah, you, you know, red shift, blue shift. What's happening is, you know, on the Walter Russell chart, and like what we've used, you've got you know indigo, indigo blue, 
green, yellow, orange, red, violet, and so on like that. But what's happening is now picture a spiral going in opposite directions towards each other, towards the center. So the, the blue is shifting to where the red is and the red shifting to where the blue is, is what's taking place. That's the real meaning of red shift, blue shift. Does that make and sense? And in the uh, human body, in the spinal system, you have that exact two colors um, going up the spine. And in oriental medicine, you call it the, uh, you know, the governing and the conception vessel. And it's the same exact colors. And, you know, long ago, I was taught different meditative uh, practices where you could visualize these colors and create balance in your spinal system and your whole central nervous system by just uh, becoming conscious of what you're talking about here and how it's duplicated in our central nervous system. Yeah, you know, it's, it's an interesting topic, isn't it? Because we, we know nothing about ourselves yet, what we're capable of, what we can and can't actually do. You know, we've been told nothing. What we did know is, you know, yeah. the answer, it died with the ancestors when the, the invasion started and, and the hijacking all this information. And it's still going on today. You know, they're still erasing history and books and all the rest of it. So you never figure any of this out. That's what they, you know, they've been busy for a few thousand years trying to erase all the information about this. And it's still going on so today. Could you relate this for us at all uh, to DNA? It seems like uh, maybe in the conventional circles are using fusion fission, which is more of an atomic theory perspective, but uh, trying to affect our DNA in certain ways, whereas these rainbows that we're talking about are actually maybe trying to accelerate our DNA in a positive way. So what's uh, what's happening with all that? Yeah, you know, we we react to this environment. You know, we, we are a product of this environment. So we, we have to have it to live here and we work in harmony with it. So, you know, our by design, our bodies are, are not much different to this technology. You know, your, your processes, your um, pineal gland, your brain, your left side brain, your likes the right side brain, you know, that that's calculating and working things out so you can think and logically work things out. It's a very intelligent design. And uh, you know, like chakras, is body chakras, this is kind of what that relates to as well. It's your body chakras, which you know, they're octaves. How you know, I'm not sure how we go using them. You know, I'm no expert on on the human body's octaves and things like that, but chakras to me are just another word for octaves. So we, you know, our body is designed in the image of this technology. So you know, you, I think uh, you mention it. You know, when you swallow, you're compressing food, and then you get you get solar plexus down there, and there's fusion point, and the expansion out the other end. <laughs> it's not much different. Your heart, you know. I, I think I seen you on the stream. Uh, I can't remember whose stream it was now, and they were talking about the heart. And now the heart, mm -hmm. you know, the heart does have a loop back on it. So you've got a counter flow of rotation there in the bloodstream from the heart. So your heart's actually an accelerator. It's accelerating the blood around your body and it spirals around your body. It's, it's, an, it's amazing yeah, when you, yeah. you know, you, when you put it together, what's happening in your body, you start to see the machine in you. You, you are a machine, you're a biological machine designed in the image of this technology and how it works. And in anthroposophical the, medicine, go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say, of course, you have the op opposites of feminine and masculine that I love that the sex principle that also is stressed here. Uh, the, and uh, yeah, it's just everywhere you look in nature, you see how this works. <laughs> you do, don't you? You know, it starts just, making more sense. You know, you can actually make more sense from Walter Russell's work now, can you? You can look at it and you've got something you can actually relate it to now. That's the important thing about Walter's work, it needs something you can relate it to, or it's not going to go anywhere. No, it's not going to make sense to no one. But, it, you know, it does go somewhere with us. It explains the technology we're actually working with. Like this here, you know, your DNA, your DNA, DNA is doing something similar to that. Here's, here's another thing for you. Look at the shape of that on the line down the centre. Where do you think your dollar sign comes from? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it's been monetized. <laughs> That's, you know, that's where your dollar sign actually comes from, that design. So, yeah, you know, it all all this ties into the workings of this technology that we're, that we're calling angels. You know, I don't know what people think, think Walter, angels are, but to us, they're, they're this technology. Walter did, uh, I think, the best job of just giving us a bird's eye view of the whole thing. And then when you get into anthroposophical medicine and the work of Steiner, he was able to uh, really show how every single part of body function was a replication of this. If you look at how the ear works, 
there's uh, there's that duality that's constantly you know working in the eyesight, in the taste, and he was able to really demonstrate that every single part of our senses is actually one unified sense if you learn how to use them properly. But uh, everything you're describing is actually what allows us to hear and see and smell and so forth. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? You know, with a machine, <laughs> a very complex machine, biological machine, now there's, find, finding our way on what this world is. There are some folks that would suggest that this is all a devious plot uh, and an overlay of electronics that is meant to control us. Um, uh, what do we say about those kinds of folks and theories? Mm, well, yeah, you know, they can use it against you. They, you know, from what I can see, they, they've already weaponized the airwaves. Um, mm -hmm. Air, food, water, and meds, pretty much the same. They've been weaponized. Um, yeah, you know, it can be used for good things and bad things. I try and avoid talking about the bad things because I can see a lot of positives in this. And I'm pretty sure Bob Green, you can as well. So, you know, I'd like to see what his thoughts are on what you can do with this technology, but st he's still not there yet because he still thinks globe and, you know, he's got that globe science going on in his head and he's going to get lost a bit. It's not going to take him anywhere. That's why he started with, with that round depiction of the um, elements because that's truly how it, how it works. And if you're using their, their, their table of elements that aren't circular like Walter's, then you've lost the, the order it gets formed in and everything. You know, that's why I like Walter's work. It's there formed and it's from the spirals. All this is created as it, as it powers up and gets faster and faster. So, yeah. I mean, like know. any technology, right? It can be used for great harm or great good. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, 9-11 is a good example, I think, of, you know, a bad use of this technology. Mm -hmm. So you can see, yeah, so, you know, what so kind the thinking of is there. They, they uh, were able to um, vibrate the ethers where it just sort of incinerated or it just caused the whole building to collapse i would say my wording of what they did was the to the the changed the molecular structure of steel and they divided and multiplied it into oblivion so it didn't exist yeah that's kind of what they did you know that would be my best explanation of what happened to the steel in that building it was divided and multiplied into oblivion and you, you can see the effects of some of them, whether, you know, it was bent and, you know, that, that even that goes back to John Hutchinson's work. Because, uh, the, the, you know, the F, I think it was the FBI, they came and confiscated that equipment off him and then called him a liar. I think they just took it and de developed it further. Wouldn't you? Yeah, it almost seems, <laughs> you, you it would, almost seems you? <laughs> like you could use this to, you know, to teleport and to do some really cool stuff. Mm, I'm not sure on teleporting because no. I heard Bob Green you mentioned that once, and well, you know, I'm no expert on that to be honest. It, it, that would I would I wouldn't try it with a living being at first anyway, because <laughs> you never I had no idea what's going to happen. Remember that film, The Fly? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, well, you, you, think, end, you maybe, might have across species then. <laughs> yeah, it makes you think about the rainbows though, and and them harvesting them in some ways. Um, and obviously, when you got the chemtrails and trying to block the ability for us to see the rainbows, uh, seems like an obvious uh, ploy there, right? Yeah, yeah, the chems, they're blocking. What I'm not as they're doing with the chems, they can block the the magnetic part of the process, but not the electric part. That's why you're still seeing the uh, small halo around the sun. That's, that's Adam, that's the electric part. Uh, Eve would be the very large halo that you see that they try and hide, but you've seen it in some of our videos. Uh, the 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 body of the halo, you know, this is the head and the body. It, it kind of refers to in I uh, forget where it comes from now. Uh, there was some re referral to it somewhere. The head and the body. Uh, I did a decode of it. You know, the head's Adam, the body's Eve, and you switch Adam off by you know they were it ch cutting off of the head. People think chopping someone's head off. No, the head is Adam and the body is Eve. So they're just switching Adam off and that shuts it down, basically. It's an on-off on process. You know, so, so, you know, it's like um, Medusa, you know, cutting off of the Medusa's head. Well, who's, who's Medusa's head? Not what is Medusa's head. Who is Medusa's head? It's the god of the sea, isn't it? What's his name? The god of the sea. <laughs> yeah, the god of the sea. What's his name? Uh, 
well uh from the greek perspective yeah okay with the trident why am i blanking out on his name bear <laughs> uh, I, I, I am as well that's why i'm asking you <laughs> <laughs> poseidon uh, poseidon so Poseidon. That's what you call a collective Poseidon. brain fart. Yeah, yeah. That was a big brain thought, wasn't it? But yeah, Poseidon is the head, is uh, Medusa's head. So it's, what it's telling you is, you know, it's shutting down Poseidon. And then obviously uh, Medusa will shut down. This is how the process stops. You know, start they start and stop. And if you watch some of our uh, Rainbow Warrior videos and clips, you'll see rainbows are rising up out of the ground, doing what they do, and then sinking back into the ground. And you can see exactly where they are on the ground doing it. You know, the, there's mountains behind them. So it's in the foreground right in front of you. This is taking place. And this is this is happening every, everywhere. You'll see it yourself, especially with time-lapse recordings. You know, you time-lapse a rainbow, and if there's enough light on it, you will see it rise up up the ground and, and sink back into the ground. Uh, you know, I think some of them do stay above ground 24-7 operating because you get winds at night. So, you know, th this thing is creating 24 7 everything on that elemental chart uh and, you know, little... and if you watched our layers video you know these are what create the pressure system yeah. people think people think you have to be content of this pressure system well no you don't you, it, what is creating the pressure should be the question where's the pressure coming from it's from above and below you know we've got electric pressure from above that you'll see that in the water that's called waves and wind that's the pre this that's this pressure and it comes well, from below as well you know you've got magnetic and electric pressure i'll just screen share this this clip here what we call a lot of you know we talk about the tor toroid a lot and then then it's counter i guess would be the hyperboloid right but that is this what walter is also explaining but he sees it more as like a cone shape um, yeah, well, the, the Taurus field is what you're actually observing below the rainbow. You know, the rainbow is sitting on top of the Taurus field, and it's created by the Taurus field. The light reflecting, reflecting and refracting from that Taurus field is what's creating the rainbow. And what you'll notice is sometimes when you look up, you'll see an inverted rainbow. That means you're looking at it from the inside of that sphere. You're in a half sphere, remember, with this Taurus field. They've all got a Taurus field, and it, it's a full sphere below the rainbow that goes sinks into the ground. So when you see an inverted uh, rainbow above you, you're actually looking at light reflecting off this torus field and it's bending the light around the top of the rainbow. And that's why it looks kind of inverted to you. That's, you know, it's an effect of this technology. And it's the torus field that's doing it. Lots of things we can reference here, so you isn't think there? The, you think the Nordics knew about this? I mean, they talk about the Bifrost, right? And it's a literally a rainbow transportation technology to take you to Midgard. As <laughs> shown in the movies. Um, well, it's not going to transport us anywhere. Well, <laughs> you get stuck in a, to a tornado, yeah, it's going to transport you somewhere, isn't it? It's going to throw you around a bit, which is what brings us to this uh, clip here. You can see this Walter Russell clip? Yep. Yep, this one with the nails. So what's taking place here? Can you see my mouse? Yep. Right, so this is a halo here. And this is iron, and this is the cone shape it makes. And you know, as in, now picture a spiral going up this cone, coming from this halo, it spirals towards there. And it makes where it says here, a cone shaped magnet will lift equally at both ends. If one weight is divided, this equator will be curved. So you can have curved equators. Uh, these can you know pick things up with a curved equator. Now, if you rotate this round 90 degrees, 90 degrees to the right, this halo would be below ground. And its north is now in the sky, isn't it? The south is uh, in the ground and north would be in the sky. This is what's throwing trucks and things around when you get tornadoes because its poles now been elevated above ground and it's causing uh, magnetic changes to, uh, and of course the wind's moving things as well, but the magnetic pole of it has now elevated above ground and that's why you will see trucks and things flying around. It's this technology, this is the cause of it. And these these images of Walter's help, you know, like uh, the bottom bottom left one, vapor cloud, divided iron, divided water, divided stone. This is what Eve's sending up into the atmosphere. She divides. She's the aquifer. So the big halo is the aquifer. It it sends matter upward. Adams is the electrifier. It multiplies it and, and sends it back down as what we call rain, snow, whatever's coming down. That's how this technology works. 
Does that make sense to you? I think, yeah. Uh, so all these elements, uh, are, real... you know, they, they meet in somewhere in, in, at a midpoint and being compressed together. Important element with all of this, with Walter Russell, is he emphasizes it's a thought-based universe. So everything you're describing as far as this technology is an idea to begin with, which creates the precipitating electrical vectors that put all this technology into play. And, uh, of course, the, the important thing there is us to realize that if we are capable of thought, then we can create our own simulations, you know, our own experience within this larger uh, technology that you're describing. So it all comes from thought, which is electricity. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the, the thought, uh, like Walter Russell mentions, the mind, the mind to me would be the programmer and in this software down below that's telling these angels to do what they do. You know, don't think for a minute it's not highly advanced technology, because it is. And I think this is where the idea from computers actually comes from down below. You know, this has to be automated and computerized on such a scale to control all this and do all these cycles so effectively uh, doing what it's doing. It is what I would call the Genesis machine. It's all working in harmony together and all the life forms on this world are living in harmony with it. We get the odd side effect now and then, like your flus and things, which is just electromagnetic radiation. It's a bit of mild radiation sickness. That's what that really is. Yeah. And, you know, they, that's they caused by the frequencies that they're operating at. Yeah. I was just uh, going to say it's an, just, analog, uh... it's an analog programming, though. And so this sort of Promethean idea that we can steal the fire and use in, but do it digitally is a, is sort of a pathetic tr try at replicating the true technology. Yeah. Yeah. We can replicate parts of it and you know, the, you'll, you'll catch them out when they try and uh, they show off with it. You know, they like to show off with it. Like uh, if you look, watch some of the Elon Musk or SpaceX launches, they're not actually rockets they're launching, it's this technology projecting a particle in this into the sky and it leaves a big trail in the ether behind it. Like well, you've probably seen it at this base. Certain type launches and I did make a video where it ties all that together, you know, because they're testing this technology everywhere. You'll find it in one of our videos. I forget the name of the video now, but it was just to show you this is I think it was the one where um the Nikola Tesla patent. Because everything, you know, man's learned has been derived from what you're seeing below. Uh, are you seeing the screen here, square in the circle? Uh, no, we just see us right now. I think you might have stopped sharing. Uh, uh, where's that? At? Uh, Michael, while we're waiting for that, I had a fun anecdote for your comment about teletransportation. In about 1981, I was in a private meeting with a gentleman by the name of Frederick Bell, who is a great-grandson of Alexander Graham Bell, and he had worked with NASA since he's 14. Now, when I met him, he was uh, in private enterprise. He had left NASA, and he, of course, explained how NASA had nothing to do with sending people to the moon, but he did describe the technologies that he was personally involved with. Uh, now, you know, I can't prove this. I just take his word. I do know he was who he said he was, and he said that as far as what we see in um, – Star Trek and everything beam me up. You know, he said, oh, no, that technology is real, and we've been doing it for a while. So uh, just kind of a fun little story. And uh, Frederick Bell was around for a few years after I had met him, and uh, he's gone now. But uh, kind of, it was an interesting meeting. He taught us about a lot of things. Wow. Yeah, there, there's some lore about Nikola Tesla working on that too, right? I don't know. It's kind of a mythos around that he was trying to work on teleportation. This is where yeah. your analog and digital comes from, guys. You know, what, what, when they're talking these digital atom structures, where's it coming from? They went digital to actually hide what it's trying to explain, really. If you look to the right, you will see the analog atom structure, which does apply to, you know, whatever these particles are, they've figured out these parts of it, how it works, and, and the orbits they have on one another. Now, I've seen people say, well, you know, show me an atom. My answer to that now would be, I can't show you one, but I can show you many. Just go outside, pick a piece of dirt up and look at it. Now drop it in a glass of water and watch it return back to its original state. Because it's been compressed into existence. So everything around us has been compressed into existence. And, and you know, um, 
you find these like Roman forts buried 30 foot below ground, you know, in under soil. Where's all this soil coming from? Well, it's this technology creating it. This is matter being, you know, produced by this technology and it's just literally falling out of the sky. Yeah, it's fascinating. It makes a lot of sense. Um, I talk about Percival a lot. I don't know if you've ever heard of Thinking and Destiny, but he literally talks about this, how nature units are compressed into reality and they're based on the four elements, uh, but they are mostly not visible. They have to be compressed for us to even see them. Yeah, yeah well, that's matter. right. That's correct. You know, you look at this, uh, you know, why does this document even exist? This is what, this document, I was trying to bring it to life, but I couldn't finish it because I couldn't make out some of the text on it. It was, you know, a bad photocopy of the document I had. So I left it at that. But, you know, this is what they call the science of God. What is God? It's light. It's, it's always been light. It's been talking about. God is light. It tells you that in your holy books, so, you know. The, this is how this technology is doing it. Now, here's Walter's the definition of that. Well, nature's method of creating power. And you're going to scratch your head and think, well, how does that make power? What's going on here? Doesn't make sense, does it? Unless you know it's compressing each one smaller and smaller. It's, you know, you can see now where the octaves are, can't you? It's like looking down the tube of Walter Russell's motor and it's towards the center is what you're looking at there. doesn't matter what shape it is. It'll still work. Square, round, you know. This mm -hmm. is the these are the octaves where the pressure points are, and this is where you can harness electric from, which is what Walter's work was based on. And this is where he's saying how nature works, and you're scratching your head saying, "Well, how can that work?" Well, I made this animation to show you how that would work. This is how the angels oh, would this. do it. This is cube in the sphere. It's not square in the circle. Remember, square in the circle is a two D reference to something, and I'm pretty sure they were well beyond two D in those days. So what they were references is these spheres that the rainbow sits upon, the Taurus fields. This, this is the, you know that's the apple. Adam, the Eve, the apple, and the snake comes into this. So I made this animation just to show you what that would look like. I'm not saying that's what the configurations in the ground look like, but we do know the ones that cross the equator, uh, the cardinal directions. There is a big mortar, like like where Walter Russell's mortar, but on a larger scale, a creator size scale. It's responsible for the quakes and effects crossing the entire map. You'll have seen that in some of our work somewhere. You know, we've mapped that. I think it's in our 144,000 video. And now, they, you know, they depict these in cities like this one in New York. The Alamo, you know, same again. Forts, castles, cathedrals. It's telling you where this technology is. <laughs> Yeah, that's what we'll be able to decode now. That's <laughs> showing you exactly where it is. So, the, you know, that that's square in the circle, cube in the sphere, or that's your Taurus field. A digital representation of a Taurus field is what that exactly is. So what Taurus field is it representing? It's the ones these angels create. There's your, uh, there's your head and body on the top right. You see the small halo and the large one. That's your Adam and your Eve. Mm -hmm. Or your Atlas and Alice. Pick a, pick a male and female name. That's the theme. The center, top center, that's the cubing of the sphere and how this electricity moves within this type of environment. Top left is various decodes relating to this. Bottom left, so that's the apple. The snake is, like I said, it's the movement through the ether. And this is how electricity moves through the ether. It spirals through it. This is where the spiral comes from. You know, this decodes all the sacred geometry of the ancients. So they weren't just making pretty patterns in the sand and on rocks and building temples for nothing, guys. It all relates to this. Even the temples are marking these sites. Just look for the rainbow now and you'll see it. You'll see what was really being marked because the, it's the, the location markers for this technology. They all are, and they put there to remind us all how it works. We've just forgot. Well, we haven't forgot. We were indoctrinated and brutalizing all the rest of it to make sure we forget. <laughs> but now it's coming back again, isn't it? We're realizing what our ancestors were actually teaching us. They weren't worshiping anything. They were glorifying it. Big difference. Not worship, glorification. That's what they were really doing. I see it, and I'm pretty sure you guys, your, you guys now see it. What's your take on crop circles? Have we discussed that in the past? Have you... Uh, man-made and the intricate ones are all man-made. There's a, there is a channel on YouTube shows you the, the Chinese pay big money for people making them, you know, for their uh, Chinese alien programs, apparently. Anyway, this guy, 
he recorded them doing them for the this chi- for this Chinese team that were flying around in a helicopter, filming filming them do you know filming afterwards, so they get their scoop on it and they make um, UFO videos from it in China. So they pay big money for these circle make crop circle makers to go up there and do it. The the real crop circles would just be a little spiral in the grass, you know. You know you know now it's 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 a vortex it creates. That's the that's a real crop circle from an angel. Anything else is man made. And to, you know, that's six, six, I did look into them years ago myself, and it made, it makes more sense. They're trying to hide it, and they pay money to you know for people to keep making them. And there's someone proving that on YouTube. So that's where I went with cropper circles. <laughs> but the real mm-hmm. one would just be a spiral in the grass. You know, it would it'd be easy to recognise actually. Just go and follow a tornado, and you'll see plenty of it. Because that's one of yeah. these. You know, that is the. If you look at the logo, the test logo. You know, I decoded this in our light in our Discord. Even though you haven't seen us active on my channel, I've still been busy in our Discord. You know, I send people there because we haven't got time to do a lot on YouTube at the moment. And I'm in between homes and I've been looking after my mother. And me, I've just got this computer I'm using now. I haven't used it for a few weeks and you know, I've just got it back up the box and set it all back up. So, you know, I have nothing currently to show you, but it doesn't matter because you know, it's all going to be more of the same from now on in. You know, it's just going to be different decodes. Like I said, the, the te- look at the Tesla logo. You've got a T-shape and a line above it. Well, that line is a, is a halo in the sky, and that cone below it is the it's Adam's cone coming down the electro of electromagnetism. That's where the, the you know the design comes from. These people like to steal the designs, and you'll find it everywhere. You're going to see it everywhere all this coming to life and what it all represents. Uh, you've probably seen some yourself and thought, "Hmm, that looks familiar." But this is what it's all relating to: it's sacred geometry, everything. All is this, and this is all. This is where this leads to. Very important information. Can we, can we relate this a little bit more to the 400-year reset since there's a lot of talk about that now and um, you know how much of uh, this reset now is actually organic and, and uh, otherwise you know being used by other folks that are using to manipulate it? Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, like I said, we, we, we worked out it was happening every 400 years and we made, we made a, bit, a series on that. So you, uh, your viewers can go look through that and see, you know, some of the things we were putting together going back in time, so like from the 1600s to the 1200s. And you've got this common theme, them being very cold. You know, we're actually going to a mini ice age now. Global warming's them just trying to warm it up. So it stops all these ice crystals forming that show it, reveal all this nature that you didn't know was there. You know, the ice crystals reveal this technology in the sky, you know, its effects in the sky and its duality. Uh, you know, even though they're elevated into the sky from below, they've still got a physical presence in the sky. That includes the luminaries as well as, you know, the halos that's above every rainbow. You know, what they call in the lunar wave, that's one of these above a rainbow. So there's, you know, there's more evidence of that if you look at lunar waves or Jupiter waves, Mars, Mars waves, you know, it's just different halos being captured in the sky by different people above these sites. And I'm kind of wandering off now because I forgot what your question was. <laughs> Um, well, actually, I was uh, looking at the 400-year resets as part of an organic technology that's uh, meant to evolve, evolve our consciousness, whereas, um, you know, other folks on the ground are trying to do the opposite, devolve mm, us into yeah. uh, more materiality. Yeah, you know, we've, thought, we've had that discussion a, few, uh, a lot in, in the APM team. Um, you know, what is it, why does it do it? Why is it so destructive? Is it part of its cycle? You know, this is the, this is what we came up with. It's part of its cycle and it has to do it to start again. Or it's an, uh, an attempt to stop man ever figuring this out and taking control of it, which is what's taking place right now. Or someone's pressing buttons down there that shouldn't be and causing it to happen and taking advantage of the mm-hmm. effects, which is what happened mm-hmm. when Rome invaded. And, you know, that's never gone away. You, you look under um, Lincoln statue's hands and you'll see who runs America. Have a good look under his hands, that statue of Lincoln. You'll see where his hands rest on. It's the empire. It's the emblem of the Roman Empire. I was going to mm-hmm. say, does this relate to the Jesuits by chance? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> same <laughs> same old people. You know, this the, the British Empire, it was the Roman Empire changed its name to the British Empire. It just changed its name. You know, today's empire is a conglomerate of nations involved in, in hiding all of this. You know, this is what your space, uh, the, the, the three things they've got in common, you know, there's space agencies are attachments to, 
nuclear technology, which is basically a Walter Russell motor, and uh, particle accelerators, of which they claim now they've made 30,000, but I would argue, no, they've redressed 30,000, and there's probably a magic number of 144,000 144, out there somewhere that we're trying to locate before they claim them all. And we're using the rainbows to locate them. Then we know when they build one there, uh, no, sorry, that was already there. <laughs> you know, we're trying to highlight to people this is how we, this might be one way of stopping them. You know, you go back to the Hopi prophecy, uh, Rainbow Warriors. It's an important thing to think about because it will unite the world. These rainbows are everywhere. <laughs> We're not lying about that you can be mapped them. You know, that, that in itself is a revelation. Who would have thought you could map a rainbow? You know, the, the revelations you have from our research is going to melt people's brains. I know it does. Well, it is, uh, at least one or two of our researchers. You haven't seen them for a while because it melted their brains. But even though know, they know it's true. But, you know, it shattered their illusions of what they assumed, how things worked before that. And, you know, you, you give them time off. <laughs> you come back when you're ready. You know, Jimbo admitted it straight away. He says, I need time off. This is, it's melting his brain. That's what he said. They were his words. And, you know, you take as long as you like, mate. You don't even come back. Don't come back if you don't want to. I wouldn't blame you because, you know, this... This has to be taken to an end point, you know. We can't just sit and talk about this forever. Who do we speak to to get this fixed? Who do we speak to to stop all these wars, which is to hide and steal all this, and get together and protect this technology? Are we supposed to be here to protect this technology? You know, there's a question. Are we supposed to be here protecting this so that our gen next generation can enjoy this world? No idea. But it has been it's, taken control of and manipulated and used against the people of the world. And it definitely seems like that, that 400 cycles about to end, right? We're right about there. I was, well, I was started going by a uh, flat fact. She's a lady researcher from Australia. Uh, she said it, she thinks it started in 2000. No, it makes sense to me because remember the millennium bug, they were worried about that. Well, that was probably the start of this, and they were worried what it was going to do to the technology, like on it on board aircraft. You know, is it going to disrupt systems and planes fall out the sky? So that was the real what the real worries about this reset starting. So yeah, you know, the millennium bug, the year two thousand is probably when it started our reset. That's why we're seeing more and more of it. It's progressive and will become more noticeable. That's what we're finding. We don't know how long it takes, but you will start seeing more and more of the construct, or more and more attempts by them to hide the construct which is what you keep seeing, you know, reading on on news, or Bill Gates wants to use chalk now, you know, fill the sky with chalk. <laughs> they're trying to dry the atmosphere up to warm it up. So, you know, they're interfering with nature to try and hide this. And God knows what they're spraying in the skies that we're breathing in. But I did notice uh, you met dementias on the rise, so it does suggest a lot of aluminium, doesn't it? Oh, Yeah. Well, there, there are actually blood tests that can be done that identify what's going into our bodies, and then it correlates with things I've been involved with for years, which is just all these epidemics of neurological disorders that were very rare at one time. So it's not any mystery. But, you know, to answer your question, are there, you know, what are we supposed to do about it? I think the first step is just getting information out. Uh, and in this day and age, when a lot of people consider themselves awakening because they're, uh, you know, figuring out that maybe the banking system isn't on the up and up, or maybe that Congress is uh, corrupt. Um, you know, of course, that's just another ruse to keep our eyes off the real ball. So that's why on this, uh, on our channel, we don't really get into political things, uh, you know, yeah, so much as just this kind of information. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. It, gets you, so, it gets you a strike anyway when you cover certain topics. So you're going to tiptoe around those, haven't you? Yeah. So this is the real information, and I think that's what we're here to do. And when enough people shift their consciousness, then, uh, then, then we'll know what to do about it. But right now, this I think we're still kind of a minority. Yeah, yeah, we are. But we're expanding. You know, the the sub count's going up slowly. Uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, we had uh, what a million views two years ago, so it's definitely being suppressed. Talk about compression. Have a look at my channel. <laughs> but yeah. 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 You know, where do we go with it? Well, we just keep doing what we're doing, guys. We put the information out there, educate people on what's going on, and 
you know, a, a, you're in a good position actually here, Bear, because you know I've said this to somebody in them. But what we need is someone that's analysing the water, you know, like rain, analyze the rain, so let us know what the hell's in it. You know, mm -hmm. the, um, a way of doing that, and it costs uh, money for the equipment to do it, but there's nothing to stop uh, someone like yourself, you know, trusted. To do a, a you know a GoFundMe, and I'm pretty sure that our team members would donate towards it and get the equipment. And you know, if you want, you could have people from around the world sending you a sample. And all you have to do is put it online. Here's your sample. Here's what's in it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's it, it might tie. You know, the the problem with that is it might tie you up. So you'd have to maybe get Mike to do it. <laughs> Give Mike a job. No, I'm joking. But yeah, <laughs> you, you see where I'm coming from. Yeah, we need we need a way. We need a way of getting this information together in a safe place and advising people on what's really going on. And that's the hard part because you can see how they shut places down when you start talking about these subjects. Well, the, you know, it's you know, 1939 the human, again, and we have to tiptoe around everywhere. The human body is the best uh, laboratory and the best way to investigate exactly what's going on because we're, you know, mirroring all the ills that are, you know, being purposely introduced into the ecosystem. And uh, for years, you know, in my work, I test the toroidal field uh, with very real exact instruments and technologies on every single patient. You can see where the distortions are. We've been able to correlate that with, uh, you know, different sectors of the body and, and therefore what kind of symptoms are going to appear. And uh, before a, like a person even tells you what's going on with them, you can tell them exactly what's going on with them just by these kinds of tests. And then, you know, with blood tests and looking at their cells under the microscope. And But of course, uh, when we get our work out, uh, in the past, we've necessarily had to keep it under wraps because you get arrested for actually helping people in that way. But uh, And then also you're called a quack if you're not, you know, doing the typical thing. But it, there's no secrets in certain circles as far as exactly what's happening and what it's doing to us. And again, uh, these kinds of chats out here that are uh, very gratifying to me because we're seeing information get out to a lot of people compared to before where nobody was hearing these things. Uh, you know, I think we're in a step in the right direction. So, yeah, this is the um, Operation Rainbow Wars. That's what I was hoping you'd show us here. Yeah, this is the one. Um, you know, you're right there, you know, tiptoeing around and all that. I don't advise you know, talking about a lot of these subjects, not on these platforms anyway. There probably is better platforms you can get away with it, but it's only a matter of time before they start going missing, isn't it? Well, that's, we don't need to, you know, you know we, mentioned... don't, we don't need to, we, we don't actually need to talk about all these other topics. All we need to say to them people is, do you not, do you, do you not want to know why that system even exists? I was, just, I was just going to say to FPV, yeah. you mentioned giving me a job. Well, I've been working my ass off to have an immutable <laughs> place where we can talk about this and they can't stop it. It's called Cordal. We need to get all of your stuff on there. It will never go away. And it has the ability to do exactly what we're doing here on there. We just need people to get off this and go over there. So with that being said, um, yeah, let's go in. Let's go into this. Um, I'm just thinking too. I brought this up on our last stream, I believe. You know, what's the legend about the end of the rainbow? Is the pot of gold? What's gold and alchemical uh, frame of reference? Well, that represents right the ultimate purification, the uh, the ultimate sort of um, object of purifying the soul with the body and spirit. It uh, represents what illumination, strength, and wealth, and prosperity, and wisdom, and power. So it's all right there and all the lore about the rainbow. Yeah, I mean, the law, you know, what you're explaining there is what comes after you, you work out and decode what the rainbow actually is because it does bring all that, you know, behind it, all the wealth and gold, silver, copper elements, you know. It relates to that. Um, the, the pot is actually the Taurus field. The handles, yes. is, the handles is the way the ether manipulates the, you know, the particles within the Taurus field. Uh, yeah, I did do a decode on that. Uh, this this video here is um, done by Junipers. This was a lady that joined us maybe a year and a half ago. And she started mapping her rainbows, her local rainbows. And with that discovery, uh, am I screen sharing, yeah? Yep. Yeah. I should be. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, it's okay then. Yes. And, you know, with that, with her mapping the rainbows, uh, we were able to locate a star, an unknown star for and. I says, right, well, you know, you do the speech for it and I'll just do the graphics for you and we'll put a quick video out because I'm having trouble with this computer I'm using now. I'm having a lot of trouble doing this kind of work with it. So 
and you know that's on hold until I get this computer fixed. Doing more graphics at the moment, but um, I'm sure other team members are going to help with that soon anyway. But yeah, uh, you know, so this was Juniper's doing a speech, and which I overlaid the graphics to to help it make sense of what she was actually talking about. You know, without the graphics, it's people probably scratching their head what she's talking about. So. I'm, I'm all living the graphics here, so people have got something to look at. That refers to what you know, parts of how this works. Like this here, this is our seasons video, how the sun works, and it goes east, shuts down. It's it's it gets its head cut off, but it's still you know it's still there emitting a bit of light, and it comes back as the light in the sky. They call in the ISS. People's asking the wrong questions, guys. You know, we, we, we've known for years they're faking the ISS. No one's just asking why would they fake the ISS? Why are they so desperate to take the credit for that light in the sky they're calling the ISS? Because it's always been here and what it actually is. You know, it's the, the configuration matches a sweetback transformer and flyback killer. That's what Jimbo decoded from it. It sweeps say, the sun. Say again, I, I missed you there. What was that? Jimbo, um, the, when I showed Jimbo what the sun's doing using our seasons video, he said that's the sweep back transformer and fly back killer. He recognized what it's doing. It sweeps west, it's light suppressed, and it's returned really fast back east to start again. That's what we call a sweep back transformer and fly back killer. So that's what the sun's con uh, mechanism is doing. It's a sweep back transformer and fly back killer. Moving this elevated technology east to west, shuts down and returns back east. As the light they call the ISS. That's why they're faking that light in the sky. You know, the people asking the wrong questions, like I keep saying. Why why are they desperate to take the credit for it? Well, we know why. We've already decoded what it is. <laughs> you know, that's the sun returning east is the ISS light. It's being suppressed. And uh, a cathode, cathode ray tube, it works exactly the same. There's no difference. So, you know, you can see where man's took these inventions and knowledge from and invented cathode ray tubes, oscilloscopes, and all the rest of it. All of our technologies derive from this technology. It's already here. You can see how it works, you know, <laughs> and like um, the spiral, you know, in 2D, we're seeing a sine wave. In 3D, that's a spiral. So all the electric coming to your home... <laughs> People think, you know, particles moving through the wire. No, that's not really what's happening in wire. Here's the big secret with electric coming to your home. You know, the what's coming down that line to your home is a spiral. It's compressing and expanding the, the entities or light entities, atoms, whatever you want to call them, that's in the wire, which are put in the correct order when it's formed, unless it's been made in an exotic environment like a vacuum. It will form positives and negatives, positives and negative. So all the sine wave is doing coming down the line is uh, compressing and expanding those light entities, and that's what's creating light, and we call electric in the wire. Can 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 you relate a little bit how the time space element comes in with the atom eve electromagnetic, uh, and how one is responsible for time, another one for spatial understanding? That perception. would be more um, Jason's department, you know, that kind of work. Um, I was working with Jason. Um, I can probably get him to put something together for you. Um, mm -hmm. But Jason does that kind of work because that was his decode. You know, I was I was showing Jason something I was working on, and he says to me, do you know what you're actually playing with there? And I says, well, what, you've got a name for it? And <laughs> he says, that's E equals MC square. I says, yeah, is it really? He said, yeah, that's what it is, and that's when we made that E equals MC square video. You know, Jason worded it because it was his decode. He recognized what it was. Like Jimbo recognized the configuration of what the sun's doing. You know, so all these people that join our group, Jason came to debunk us. He ended up joining us. <laughs> he couldn't debunk us. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's it's good fun working with these people. They see it, and they know it, and they can, they can give you the proper mathematical expressions for it, whereas I would fail at that. You know, that's not my department. Anything mathematical well, like that, I would refer to Jason because he's more agenda up on that subject. And, you know, beyond mathematics, you, we can all have our practical experience. We all, uh, you know, are familiar with people saying, you know, be in the present and you do meditative practices and so forth to reach that state of consciousness. But Walter, you know, really explained it pretty easily when you're attention has been brought into the material compression uh, part of the cycle solely without really paying any attention to the radiation cycle so now you're caught in that incremental 
um, compression, which creates the next frame of the movie, so to speak. And that gives you a sequential experience, which then gives you the perception of time. However, if you go back up to the equator and uh, that old saying, uh, you know, I'm the resurrection and the life. Now you're in that equator position in the moment and you're seeing both ends of the cycle at the same time. And at the same time, you also uh, get to create what you you know, want to create and not be just a, um, a victim of the materialistic cycle. So, you know, a lot of this uh, we can put to experience and, and I love the mathematics and getting into the heady stuff, but I think it then again, if we just kind of uh, think about it logically and have our own experience, you know, getting out in nature, all those sorts of things, a lot of this is right in front of our face all the time and we can really transcend that uh, what they're talking about, uh, you know, spatial relationships or thinking that there's a time element in the first place, or to have to go into some kind of uh, Einsteinian theory about the relativity of time or some such thing. Oh, Jason, you would love Jason. <laughs> I'm telling you, we were just talking about Einstein a few days ago. And he actually, you know, he actually praised Einstein and he says, you know, what they've done to him made him get it wrong. So you know he's been he's been yeah he's been manipulated by them and come out with something that he wasn't intending to come out with. This is what Jason's now saying. So he knows it's wrong, and he was manipulated into doing it. It seems from what Jason's telling me, which makes sense. You know, this is this is how these people work. They can't have you letting the truth out, can they? So they're going to manipulate it in some way. He was manipulated mm -hmm. by the cousin he married. <laughs> it might be something to do with it. Huh? As Darwin she, did too. What, they seem to all, all of the main scientism guys seem to marry their cousin. Just yeah, to keep it in the family. You can see why, because they don't want this knowledge getting out. You know, how could you explain some of this to someone? You know, the, the, what you're seeing on the screen here, they're explaining to their families like like it's you know, it's normal to talk about, which to us it is now. You know, we can talk about this forever. Um, I love how you use Neo. I love those graphics. It's like I was telling somebody in the chat, the Universal One video you guys have. I literally just put that up on my big screen in my TV room on Friday night and just have that like on the background for fun. That's like party time. It's lovely, that, uh, isn't it? Yeah. That's Sandra's husband that made that. He's fantastic at doing the graphics for our work now. You know, he's took over doing a lot of the stuff I was doing because he's got the time to do that, whereas I didn't have. He makes I was just going to say it's interesting because you have those bright neon like effects and of course we know yeah them. it's it, they're, they're really nice for highlighting certain points as well and they you know like they, they see the spirals there you know the octaves of them spirals yeah that's brilliant so you know there's your there's your spirals your octaves uh, that the angels create and like that image just showed before you know there's another decode in this image where where's it this one here this angel here you know what's it actually depicting angels in the underworld you know you've forgotten what they that they were personified the personified beings well this personified technology that people are now bring into life from books as people or creatures with wings even but it's just a personification of this technology yeah and how deep that goes i've no idea this is going to upset a lot of religious people because what's in them books may be relating to personified technology you've got to be very careful now because I wouldn't want someone worshiping technology without realizing what they're worshiping. And that's very easily done when you see how they manipulate this and they lied that our ancestors were worshiping gods, false gods. When in fact, Moro Bellino says there's many gods in the Bible if you know how to decode the Bible. So he's saying the same thing. It's talking about many gods, not one. And the gods it's talking about is what we've called angels in our time, but they were creator gods, Anunnaki, Cherubim, Seraphim. Lot, they've got lots of names throughout time from different cultures, but they're all reference, referencing the same technology. Just different names and depictions from it is what you'll find. What's your perspective on the underworld in terms of hollow earth or uh, under the plane of an earth? Uh, well, you can see from our work now, the underworld plays a big part. You know, it tells you in your holy books, the angel, the underworld is the angel's prison. It's not actually lying. They're already there. You just don't know what they are and, until you start looking at our research and decode what an angel actually is. It's the technology they call an apartheid accelerator. That is an angel. This is what your cross represents. You know, the, the cross is the Walter Russell motor with a, with a halo around it, which is a, a coil. It's an electromagnetic coil. 
this is the creator's glory, people, is what it's telling you. It's always been here. This is what all the sacred geometry in the world's telling you. This site you're seeing on the screen now, there's one below there. The rainbow is its signature. This is how Juniper found it. That, that angel there creates the nature, the weather in that area. It'll create local winds. It'll create the rain, the snow. You know, this is what they do. They create. <laughs> this is a, a site uh, from Oliver Grock, Cromwell times. It's probably been there forever. You know, it wasn't built then. They built What these people have got a habit of doing is building on top of these sites and, uh, you know, assuming authority over these sites is actually what it's doing. And I'm pretty sure our ancestors knew where they all were before the Romans came. They were, they were all marking these sites. You know, you had um, temples and things like this. They're all site markers for where this technology is. I did a decode on the bell, a little decode on the bell the other day. I'll show you that. It was just an image you made for uh, people on our Discord. I would recommend people join our Discord because you can register your rainbow there and get lots of hints and tips there that you won't find uh, in our videos on my channel at the moment. You know, I'm keeping biz people busy in our Discord if I, when I can and giving them tips there and and even that will help them get um, get this information that they, you know, researching for the Rainbow Warrior program. All right, where's that image? Uh, I'll show you this one first. <laughs> Here's a good one. There you go. You've got a decode now. What's causing the edge of rain? Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. Why does the rain end there? That's the edge of that local angel Taurus field. It can't rain any further because that's as far as it can throw it out. That's why rain's got an edge. It's a localized effect, an event. So your weather is all localized events. They do join in with national and international events at times when they're all running together. This is what you call in hurricanes and whirlwinds and you know, tornadoes. It's, it's this technology working. This is how it works. So you've got an edge of rain there, an answer for the edge of rain. It's the edge of the Taurus field. It can't rain any further than the edge of its own Taurus field. This would be where the rainbow ends, somewhere around here. That totally uh, that totally makes sense, because if you consider it's just coming from a globulous cloud, you wouldn't have an edge. Yeah, yeah, it's it's ridiculous, isn't it? You know, what they've got us believing in is unbelievable. There's another one. I did a little decode of this earlier as well. Can you see that? I'm not sure, who, I can't read whose image it is, but it is copyright, so it's not my image. I'll just put some text on it to show you what, you, what you're actually seeing here. You've got the sun halo, you've got a rainbow above it, and the inverted rainbow above it is caused by the, the observer being within the Taurus field is now going to see the rainbow at that angle. People outside of that Taurus field would see a normal rainbow there, but because he's within the Taurus field, this observer that's took this photograph... You get that inverted rainbow at the top. So you've got a sun halo in the distance and a local light, a local rainbow in front of you. That's what you're actually seeing here. So a little decode there so you know what you're looking at when you see that. You will see these effects yourself at some point in time, especially the one at the top, the inverted rainbow. Always look up because you will see it sometimes above your home or, you know, off to your left or your right. Or it's, it's basically the top of the Taurus field. You'll see them quite regular once you start seeing there, uh, looking for them. That's not the picture I'm looking at. That is. And perhaps this kind of technology could be duplicated when we use uh, things like Oregon technology to make it rain in a certain location or when indigenous people do a rain dance. Or yeah. are they just <laughs> tapping into that? Uh, Calling the angels. How does that? Yeah. yeah, you know, rain dance. I thought that before. And to me, that's ancient knowledge. Um, they didn't know how to cause it or they're trying to make it rain by you know stamping the feet and creating octaves and things i think that's the, that's possibly a way man can trigger events to happen i'm not saying it mm -hmm. does happen or has happened i'm saying that's what my thoughts on that were the, that the ancient knowledge on that probably relates to trying to you know um, get it to rain get the local angel to kick into gear and start raining whether it works or not no idea I and mean, I've, never, I've never seen it done but i've thought of that before uh, the bell, can you see that on the screen? 
Yes. Yeah, the bell, you know, that's what it represents. See that shape from that tornado going on? That's what your bell represents. It uh, represents that shape. That's where these temples are bell-shaped. It represents this torn mm -hmm. field that's going up into the What's, sky, you know? <laughs> almost like a half of a uh, hyperboloid. Wait. Yeah, you know, so the, you can tell there's a halo below there, and it's causing that. It's, you can see the spiral going up and up and up, can't you? It's kind of bell-shaped. I was discussing this with uh, Junipers a few days ago. You know, the bell, to me now, it would be on old buildings long before religion was invented. And when this technology started up, like you can see that one there has, the people would come and ring a bell and let you know that angel's active and perhaps that's where you go and get your batteries charged. You know, you take your bag with that battery and go and get it charged. Because <laughs> these yeah. sites, these sites weren't were used for worship, no. They were probably where you went to charge your batteries and things in them days. They were, you know, they were a lot more advanced than the letting us know. When you look at the antikythera mechanism, you know, it's like a 2,000-year-old hand-crank computer. That plots all the movement of the luminaries. You know, that's a hand-crank computer from 2,000 years ago. We've never been a dumb species. You know, we haven't evolved from anything. We are what we are, and we've always been what we are, is what I can see. As far back as you look, you know, the, the oldest things you find in history, looking back, is going to be spirals carved into a rock or something. And that there tells me they knew how this worked. Why would you, you know, the spiral to me is the spiral from the spiraling pressure waves of electromagnetism from this technology. And the idea here is that, and people have found by tracking the rainbows is they're, they're stationary, right? They're always there at the same place. Yeah, yeah, they're stationary, unless you're moving. And, of course, when you start moving, the light shining on the rainbow, which is your sun, it's that it's not going to change a bit and it's going to make the rainbow appear to revolve. If you do a time lapse of a rainbow site, you'll see the rainbow slowly revolving, but it's not actually revolving. It's just the sun, you know, illuminating the torus field and moving around it and it's causing the rainbow to move with it. That's what's really happening. If you watch our rainbow warrior videos, there's good tips in there for you. You know, you put the sun behind you, then you start looking in that direction. Uh, with the sun to your back and look for your rainbows in that direction. That's where you, you would see them. So, like I said, you know, what, go and uh, read the tips on it and start mapping them. You get it, you're going to get a surprise and you will see how they, you know, they create your local weather. And there's lots of tips there that you can look for, you know, like your local weather veins. You know, what do people imagine weather veins are used for? Yeah, it shows you the direction the wind's going, but guess where it's heading? It heads towards the nearest local angel. It's been drawn into its torus field up and its points right at it. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's what they're doing. So the yes, yeah, so and the, the the weather vane can show you the nearest local and active angel where the wind's been drawn towards. Hmm. That's and another, that's why you know, churches another... had churches had the spires, uh, you know, the on the top the antenna, and they're yeah. put in places where the angels are to tap into that field, the electric field, and. Well, wow. before before the um, religion kicked in and they used it as places of worship, uh, you know, that this one's active, quick, come over and start charging your batteries up. And there may have been a price for it, who knows? We don't know our history anymore because it's been erased. But I can see, you know, down looking along them routes, that's how our ancestors would probably be aware of this technology and utilize it. So FPV, there's a lot of, uh, we'll say in the stationary Earth community, a lot of different maps of our realm. Um, could you speak a little bit about the the map that uh, you've decoded from your work? Yeah, certainly. Um, the Mercator map, we did uh, go through that with you in our first video, why we used that map and the research uh, we did upon it. Um, I'll, get, I'll put the map on screen. Because you're going to find that people, anyone new to our research and the flat earth revelation, um, you're going to come across different maps and models. You won't find us pushing ours anywhere much. We prefer people to come and watch our videos and make their own mind up from what we've researched and decoded ourselves. We've never been debunked in, debunked in the past eight years on the map. And we can see why you can't debunk it. Because the the... The false dichotomy in this arena is the pizza map versus the globe. It's a false dichotomy organized by the people hiding this. Uh, there's too many ways you can debunk both of them, the globe and the pizza, and both of them are actually designed to hide east, east and west. That's what they're really doing, you know, by making a Pac-Man sun map go in circles. It's not actually going in circles, like you can see from this video. This is what we 
show how it's actually operating our seasons video. Can you see that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, it goes west, it shuts down, it's like it's suppressed, and then it's swept east to start again. And there's two ways it does it as well. Well, actually, free with the 24 hour sun. It's got three different routes it takes. This one here is called the Molni orbit. No, you know, they tried to tell you that's a satellite. What the hell would a satellite do be doing doing that kind of movement? It's actually kind of square waves when you look at it. Uh, so, you know, spring and autumn, uh, what I would call square waves. And uh, summer and winter are actually spiral uh, sine waves. You know, you, you can see that on here as it goes across uh, hold on, the movements that they do. See, it's, it's coming back there. It creates a spiral movement back. This is what the ISS is doing. You'll see it crossing the sky doing these movements. So that, to me, is the sun returning east. On Why it does it that way, I'm not sure, but <laughs> that's what it's doing. So, And this has been added to from Walter Russell's work, uh, work from the mimic maps of the events we've seen on the mimic map, which involves um, precipitation. The waveform change on the oscilloscope on the left, that was just to show you the changes happening across spring, summer, autumn and winter, and how the waveform actually changes. The bottom left one is the ancients calendar, the creation calendar of uh, how things work. And the one on the bottom right is the one I made um, to show you what's really going on and where the, you know, if there's gates there, why the sun is moving up and down the map and the front and rear gates it would have to use, which is, of course, what makes the changes, uh, the hourly change, well, the minutes changes. Of the, the light the light days and nights, you know, as it gets darker and darker or lighter and lighter, this is due to the configuration of this gate sequence here, which kind of lines up with the Book of Enoch's description of how these gates are constructed for, um, to one another. They're like, this kind of configuration would make sense. That's why you're getting shortening and lengthening of days. Uh, the... the no, I'm not sure if you guys do it, but you've got... Um, Daylight savings time where they put the clocks forward and back an hour. Right. Uh, right. They coded that. What they're doing there is trying to hide the front and gate rear changes because uh, if it's coming from a front gate, if you look at the gates, right, the, with my mouse, uh, see these ones here, these would be front gates here, these six, and the six rear ones behind it. And what it's doing is it'll go up and down these gates. It's creating like a, a weird shaped number eight which is what we're calling an analema you know the analema is created by this going up and down this sequence here but what's important about this you know like i said the the daylight savings time they're trying to come trying to hide that there's a change from a front gate to a rear gate because now the sun's going to start at a different time it's going to arrive later or sooner depending if it's front or rear gates so they're trying to compensate for that by changing your clocks because on a globe, the globe would have to slow down or speed up to do what it's actually doing. And we know it's not a globe and we know it's not it's not moving. So there's nothing speeding up or slow down. It's the sun changing gates uh, to that configuration, which is creating the, the short days and the long days. There's so much falls into place with this. It's unbelievable. It gets easier to decode. It really does. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah, it does. And um, do you have anything to say about uh, what the land masses might actually look like? Uh, or, or is that... Um... Well, I would say the <laughs> Google Maps will probably be the closest thing to what it actually looks like. Because, uh, you know, all GP, all real-world data is coming from the Mercator map. It's not coming from any other map, but the uh, Mercator map. All of this only works on this map. Uh, that's the map you're looking at there, the Mercator map. Um, World War Two was all about taking control of the perimeters, the North and South treaties and the East and West date lines. Because what they've done there, if you look at the East and West sides of Antarctica, there's clean cuts in the map. They've cut the map and wrapped it around a ball to make a globe. So whatever was East and West of there, it no longer exists on that map. So you've seen a small piece of something bigger. This is the East and West date lines and no one is crossing them. You can't go East to get West and West to get East in the real world. It's a level plane. You can't, it's not a Pac-Man map. Your Pac-Man maps are your globe and your pizza maps because they're Pac-Man in the sun rounding circles to keep it in play, whereas we don't see it doing that. 
And like I said, you know, the World War II was taking control of these areas, the East and West date lines, and they control air and shipping. But in our old research from about seven years ago, I was finding routes they were using in the north to fake the globe. They were fly actually flying across the map over Greenland and coming back down into the map again. That would fake the globe, and people would think they'd probably just go around a ball, but they haven't. Aviation obliterates a ball. You know, you, you, if you know anything about aviation, it doesn't work on a globe. It's, it would be impossible. It's ridiculous. Not to mention you'd have the nose tipped down. <laughs> yeah, they'd have to, ball. you know, they, it would have to follow curvature, wouldn't it? And that would that information would it would be revealed in the aircraft attitude data. Well, it's not there, it doesn't exist. <laughs> Plus passengers go into free fall at 30 degree 30 degree pitch and beyond. So I think they would notice if it was uh, flying on a curve. Now you can go to NASA's own website and there's an aircraft document there. And it tells you in the back of there in the summary, aircraft are designed to fly over a flat, non-rotating earth. They can't tell lies when it's going to involve people's lives. They can lie about actors in space because they're not in space. But they can't lie about aircraft and how they work. And, you know, imagine if a pilot thought, well, I better follow the curve. I can't see where I'm going. It looks a bit foggy. I better follow the curve. You know where he's going to end up. He's going to hit the ground. They can't do it. They can't so put that in, information in, out there that they have to follow curvature because it would cost lives. There is oh, no yeah. curvature. It's, it's ridiculous. Like I've it had, pilot, I've actually had pilots come up to me. I've had a pilot come up to me, a commercial airline pilot at Oakland Airport, uh, recognized me, and we got into a really interesting conversation about this. <laughs> mm, yeah, you know the there's aircraft a whole, attitude data. There's a whole culture around where you don't talk about this uh, in the commercial pilot scene, but there's also yeah, a, sort of, an un, yeah, you, there's an understanding though that most get it. And there's kind of tongue in cheek, like, Oh, we're on a globe. Sure. Buddy. But, I, but um, <laughs> I did pilot training and all I can say is from high altitudes flying, uh, I could never discern a curvature and part of the training was to cover up the instruments so that you have to just rely on the horizon and uh, so you really you know i spent a lot of hours up there flying and and just focused on the horizon you know in order to fly so yeah uh yeah it's just it's hard to discern any curvature so in order to create the false globe they have to what uh fold in antarctica so does that mean that a lot of the people with the stationary earth maps are are correct and that antarctica is uh ex exceedingly larger or maybe um encircling the globe or the sorry the well the uh, mercator the map shows that the mercator map shows antarctica being massive like way bigger than all mm -hmm. the other continents put together yeah yeah you know what we're seeing there is probably a fraction of what it looks like you can go back to admiral Byrd's statement on antarctica you know, he said there's lands beyond Antarctica bigger than the states. I would believe him because mm -hmm. the way the way he worded it, you know, south of the South Pole. Well, that's not suggesting it's a globe, then, is it? South of you wouldn't say that if it was a globe. South of the South Pole is going back up to the other side of the globe, is it not? <laughs> well, obviously not, is it? He's, he's referencing somewhere south of the South Pole. So the South Pole is just a marker somewhere in the ground. Or, well, mm -hmm. that's what they put on the ground, but. The South Pole to us would be the opposite of the North Pole of where this technology resides. You know, the gates in the North, South, East and West uh, going by our work is where there'd be uh, the biggest halo that we've you would put there. You know, it'd be a giant halo and what we're calling stars are, are actually effects from the nodes of these halos being elevated into the sky. Now, so is thing... there an energetic sort of magnetic, electromagnetic wall that is stopping exploration past that you think or oh good question um, <laughs> i can't elaborate on that really because you know we do need exploration to, to see what's beyond there you know there's, there's no reason why it couldn't be an infinite plane we've no idea what we're dealing with here yet and all we know is they're hiding the me mechanisms just outside of the borders of the date lines and the treaties we know a lot of people go to Antarctica <laughs> and there's talk of even them finding, uh, I guess, coming up to some sort of wall they've been trying to get through. And there's all sorts of conjecture and hearsay. And I, I mean, I guess there's a guy talking about uh, he's going to be traveling across Antarctica. I don't know how he got the rights to do that. That's been like in the buzz in the news mm. uh, by sled or something. I don't know. Um, there is uh, there is actually uh, a good little talk 
with him and Flat Earth Dave were on at the same time on uh, Nino Rodriguez the other day. Oh, is that right? Interesting. Yeah, now but... the, the, the the Antarctica trekker is actually a stationary Earth guy. Uh, he doesn't mm -hmm. know shape or anything, but he's convinced, you know, in the, in the geocentric model. But it was fun uh, listening to Flat Earth Dave and him conjecture back and forth. So, and this guy's trying to go to go do this thing on Antarctica, or yeah, he says he's gonna, you know, trek the whole thing there, and uh, and then you know, the, the debate was, all right, how are you gonna do that when they don't even let anybody in there in the first place? Yeah, yeah, yeah and... you know, it's, it suggests he's a company man, doesn't it? And he's gonna do, do something and convince you it was done correctly, and you can't go there to right. validate that, can you? Yeah, no so... to validate what they're saying. You know, we found that with like the diamonds and that people, you know, like one consciences work on the diamonds. You know, she was finding people who were swimming saying they swam the diamonds. Yeah, it just shows you a picture of someone in the water. That could have been the local baths or anywhere she was at. You know, no idea where she was, have you? And and what did she swim? Why did she even swim there? It doesn't make sense, does it? Why would you want to go to the diamonds and swim there? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you know, they're just uh, globalist stories to keep the globe religion alive. It is a religion. You've got to, it's a belief system like religion is. They just create so, belief systems of divide and conquer these people. So in this model, the gates here that I where the luminary well, the sun comes out of, um, do we have an idea? Are those do those have a geographic um nodal point or or those more sort of metaphysical if you know what i mean these are physical well, i would gates. say you know going by what we're seeing so far and the glorification of all this i would imagine there's something very nice there you know the gates in the north south east and west there's going, there's going to be something nice there on a scale we can't comprehend yet it's going to be quite large because you know you're talking these luminaries are coming out of there or from there you know what they what are uh, they called portals would be probably this area where the sun appears from because you know it's there's nothing there all of a sudden as the sun comes up the ground and off it goes going westward because the sun you know these things aren't physical objects but they do maintain a physical presence in the atmosphere um the the uh, emerald tablets reference the sun coming from and returning to the ground you know that tells me that's it shutting down starting up crossing and shutting down again to come back it's been elevated up there and shut down and it comes back and obviously it's the light shining in the sky from it and that's what we call on the ISS. So yeah, you know, there is references to it in other things that you look at, like the Emerald Tablets and it's our work's been uh, you know, like d detective work really. It is a live research decode and investigation into what the hell is going on in this world and how it works. Well, it's definitely ridiculous to think the the mainstream story of the ISS being we're seeing the lights from it from thousands of yeah. miles. Well, of what you're really seeing, you know, what you're really seeing is parts of the configuration that's putting it there from below. Yeah, being elevated there, you know, and even though when it when it's returning, it's it's still keeping it elevated there. So that's what I mean by it's still maintaining the physical presence. Same with the moon, you know, the moon. Eclipsing the sun. Um, how can it do that when you can't even see the moon? Well, the moon could be shut down. You know, it's the head, shut the head down and that's the head switched off. The body could still be there and that's what you're seeing, the body. You know, the, this is what you're actually seeing. The body's still got a physical presence in the sky and that's more noticeable when you look at an eclipse. Something is there in the sky that we can't see. It's the body of one of these. They're not physical. So Mike, we. You know, they're not solid objects. Were you just they're, referring to within a Taurus field being elevated up above and moved across the sky? Yeah. Mike, what were you just referring to? The northern lights? No, I was saying like the space station and satellites. It's a joke oh, to think okay. that there are 180 okay. miles up, 200 miles up. The angular resolution of our eyes could not, you know, we can't see lights. Oh, okay. That far. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, what it, about it's, the northern lights? What's going yeah, the on northern. there? No, I, I, I hear you, Mike. Thanks. It baffles logic. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why their, their ISS model tries to replicate what it sees in the sky. But what I've noticed myself, some of these things moving around the sky, these lights, the configurations of them are slightly different. So you're seeing different luminaries configurations here, or the technology that puts them there more to the point. That is what you're really seeing. You're mm -hmm. seeing parts of the technology that's involved in elevating them up there, you know, like the halos and things. 
that's 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 physically below elevating it up there using electromagnetism as the elevation mechanism 90 degree in opposition it's got no choice but to get elevated like the sun you see in the spirit mm -hmm. of a nuclear fusion reactor that's what the mm -hmm. sun is it's the internal chamber of a fusion reactor being elevated into the sky into its you know it's within its solar field trapped there and moved across the sky basically that's what we're calling the sun it's a positive positive and negative um electrical arcing is what you're looking at which is probably why you get a suntan from when you're welding you know you can weld you're going to get a suntan it's so you get some, I don't know if you know that, but when you're welding, you you get sunburn. It's no different to what the sun's doing. It's the same process. You got a positive and negative arcing out, and it causes this. Amazing, isn't it? How it all comes together. Well, that's why I've always enjoyed your work um, above all the other um, bodies of research out there, is because you do liken it to a technology. That's been my experience, just working with organic or biological uh, technology, I look at it as a technology. And when you understand the mechanisms, then you can actually participate it, in it, whether you're in medicine or farming and so forth. So it has a real practical value to it. Yeah. Uh, I would just suggest that this, when we use the word technology, that doesn't mean it's non-sentient. Uh, we're not talking necessarily about some kind of AI or something. We're talking about real a real living hierarchy of consciousness, and you can uh, call it God, you can call it angels, whatever. But mm. um, well, you know, the word God it yeah. didn't exist in in ancient times. It was it was inserted mm. into books at some point in time, mm. uh, which brings you you know that does bring you back to a creator. You know, the creator. Is not a religious thing. You know, what creator would make use of pick a religion or pick a side? That's when you know you're doing wrong. You're not you, you're being led astray. And the way they've done it with the books is by perso personifying this technology. So you 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 assume you're reading a book about people when it's actually telling you about how this technology works and where it moves around the world and what it's doing. And you you pick up a bit more on that in the. Old Testament books, uh, you know, they're not as, they haven't got the word God in used in it as much. They, you know, they use different names. Uh, so you know, it, it all falls back on. You can see how they've done it to hide it and personify it, and all these uh, all these depictions and geometry and folklore and everything they code into it. You know, it's amazing what you can decode. I, I, I probably decode something every day. I, you know, I'll make a mental note of it. I'll write it down if it's something really important. Uh, other bits I, I keep for like interviews like this, you know, you can bring things up you've never spoken about before because, you know, I haven't got a slot to put it in or where does it fit in with this? Or, you know, do people need to know that information yet? So we kind of, the, the videos we output, we try and keep on target of what the map and models are doing and conversations like this, we can go deeper and, you know, like with you guys, start using your, your, your logic and see what's really going on here. Yeah, and you also got to wonder you, if the if the mechanics of the machine are really all turned on. Yeah, words, yeah, you know, you will. Like I said, you'll see certain ones shoot there, starting up and shutting down. So some run twenty four seven. Some uh, got other processes going on, and what you'll see them doing is helping shepherd luminaries across. Is what they're really doing. You know, they've got their own mm -hmm. roles going on locally to you. When there's like the moon or something passing, they'll kick into a higher gear. They'll be more active. It's sending more particles up into the atmosphere. And, you know, these luminaries obviously utilize the electrical positive and negatives when they're passing from these local angels. An angel being an accelerator type technology. If you believe in the hermetic principles as, as above, so below, it uh, appears to me that our own biology is not fully operative either and uh been shut down so i think that's part of what we're all doing here is just going well, a little yeah. bit deeper into these concepts so we can learn how to switch ourselves back on yeah we know nothing about ourselves yet do we you know they talk about receptors like cannabis receptors and nicotine receptors and things what other receptors have we got that we don't even know about and what you know what do, we, what do you do with them <laughs> what are they what they do with yeah. There's a lot we don't know about, and I'm pretty sure we're kept in the dark as to the why, because you will figure parts out that you're not supposed to. You know, getting the big picture probably wouldn't happen. 
unless you work on it for a long time like we've been doing. I, it, I, you know, I these, believe these there things, are... Go ahead. No, I was just going to these things will pop into your head, but, you know, how far can you go with that information? You, you, know, you end up with a dead point, don't you? You can't take it any further and it's put to the back of your mind. But in, in ours, it's only put to the, you know, on a shelf or somewhere until we find the right situation or place to bring it up in that, that topic or that proof or whatever. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that I, <laughs> I say I believe there are individuals that have um, this just say put themselves back together in a sense, you know, the so-called masters. And when you get into some of those teachings that have been around for a long time, they all say exactly what you're saying, FPV, is that it has nothing to do with religion. And in fact, religion has done nothing uh, except confuse us. And, um, you know, to them, it's a matter of physics and understanding how the mechanism works and how to free ourselves uh, so that we can do that. So, sorry, Mike, go ahead. I was just going to parlay off the body thing and I'm, I've been reinvestigating the gene keys concept. I know Barry, you're yeah. familiar with this and this sort of hologenic profile and everything and like how certain individuals are turned on in different ways. And then of course you're relating this spiral of the DNA and the Walter Russell compression, decompression. There's something definitely there related to all the machinery of the, as above, so below um, that is really cool that people are investigating this more we're actually we have a gentleman christopher august coming to music and sky to do a gene keys breathwork activation that's going to be super cool mm, um yeah. so yeah and the idea of using our our machine that's something bear and i are really we always talk about on this channel is the greatest technology is us right and to be able to i think we're supposed to interface with this with this in a way that we haven't quite turned on correctly yet. That's what I was yeah, kind of getting yeah. at. We do, we do get asked a lot of questions like, that, you know, can we interact with it? I, I really don't know. Or perhaps we do, we don't understand that we do yet. <laughs> Who knows? You know, this yeah. it would probably require lots of research and going down below to see, you know, what's going on down there and how does that tie in with how we work? So there's a lot know of... Know thyself. You know, the, yeah. <laughs> know thy world. Only, only then can you know yourself. And, and I think we're, doing, as, you know, we're, we're trying to learn our world, aren't we? We're finding our way and how this world works. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as Walter talks about the true meaning of what the light is and what mind is and how it relates to us. And, you know, he's a great example of somebody who was able to transcend and see the light and, and see how it all works. And he would stress that all of us have the ability to do that. And yeah, if yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, like Walter says, nothing dies. You know, we fear people fear death, uh, and that's been put into us by people. Our ancestors never feared death. They just look. They seemed to me that they actually look forward to it because you know it's like level two or level one hundred. You know, what level are we actually on now? No idea. But yeah, you know, there's there's like after death things. Uh, the ancestors never feed it. Nothing dies. Everything's recycled. Yeah. You can see that from Walter's work, and you can see nature does it. We, we, you know, why would we be any different? Are we coming here every X amount of years and reliving this same thing over and over? It's very possible we are. You know, th there is examples of people coming back with memories from another time. Where are the memories coming from? Are they their memories or someone else's? How did they end up with their memories? How can they speak foreign language when they've never been there? It happened. These things happen. It's strange. Yeah. And the fact that some have scarring that like is literally connected with that memory. And then you get in the phot photographic evidence of reincarnation and there's a lot of trippy stuff on that end. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, sure. the, the sun reincarnates every day, doesn't it? You know, so that's reincarnation of Jesus, <laughs> the, the, the resurrection. The, it's the, it's the on switch, right? The sun's starting up and off it goes. <laughs> that's what Jesus is basically depicted as that's what it's mm -hmm. doing. Well, so, you know, also there's um, there's advanced ways of understanding palmistry. We're not talking about your, you know, local palm reader, but if you understand the hand and the lines on the hand, you know, all the electrical memories, and Walter would tell us that everything is just an electrical memory, but those memories for past embodiments, then the light that is coming in to animate us through the top of the head every single moment um, goes through the, the next part of our body, which has more higher cerebral connections than any other part of our body, which is hands. And as it exits our hands, that leaves the hands, the, um, 
the lines on the hands. And I started studying a long time ago, a book by St. Germain, uh, where he had a very, uh, you know, evolved uh, way of discerning what those imprints mean on your hands that are left by that exiting light that goes uh, through all those recordings from the past and how to discern a lot about people. I used it for medicine, uh, but um, yeah, it, there's just so much we haven't been taught. Yeah, there's a lot of things, a lot of subjects you can bring into this, isn't there? You know, but like, like I yeah. say, I can't, uh, if I can't get an end point, I have to put it down because I like to try and find something people can go outside and prove to themselves, which is which was what Operation Rainbow Warriors about. You know, you can go outside, you can prove to yourself that re rainbow resides there. It's always been there. You'll then see it interacting with clouds and how it creates your local weather. You know, th these are things you can go and prove to yourself now and just by following our, our research and hints and tips that we've been giving. So that's the end, that's kind of end points I like to look for. You know, I know a lot of the other things we're talking about, we can't find end points, but it doesn't mean you shut the subject down because we really do know, know nothing yet, do we? I don't think so. <laughs> we don't yeah, know until you know. we know, I guess, huh? <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot to relearn. You know, the, the ancients. Are, I'm pretty sure we're, we're well advanced of where we're at today. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to relearn. There is. I say relearn because we are rediscovering old knowledge here. It's not. It's not something new. It's always been here. It's always been part of us, and it's been suppressed from us. It's been stolen from us. It's. It's our birthright. But that's why we keep playing the game. Yeah. Stop. You know. Stop picking sides. Stop playing their game. Don't pick a side, step outside the box, have a look at what you're actually involved in and, and reflect on that. That's what I would recommend to anyone. Reflect yeah. on what you're actually involved in, your religion, your war, your, you know, whatever, your your grievance with the world. What is it you're involved in? And why did you end up there in the first place? Stop getting involved in it. Just step outside of it. Step outside the box and have a good look at the box and you're going to see what the box actually is. So all that being said, FPV, I know you've had a lot on your plate lately. And um, so are you uh, anticipating any special projects uh, in continuing your work in the future and maybe uh, share any of that with our audience or any final thoughts and uh, the best place to find all your work? Yeah, you'll definitely be hearing more from us. The team, uh, you know, it's, it's the timing is pretty amazing at the moment. Uh, everyone's coming back together from being, you know, uh, you know, everyone deserves a life and I don't pressure people to do anything in this research. You know, you do it in your own time, in your own, at your own pace. There's no pressures in APM for you to do anything, but, you know, it's all in your own time. And, you know, people's getting the time now to get, you know, start coming back together again and we're going to get together and start outputting more videos on this. You know, we um we consult what we can do is consolidate what we've got into better videos because all, all our videos are like place markers for you know things we've discovered in time and they're place markers of our research and history now and we can consolidate them make them better make me maybe even reword some of them a bit better because as you progress you get to word it easier you know it wasn't easy in the early days wording all this to people but, and, you know, you become a bit more fluent at word in it. You can learn things from other people. You know, I'm no expert on many things, but I do know how to, I do know, I do know how to explain this and decode it. That seems to be what I'm good at. So I'll stick with that and I'll make sure the team members, you know, they get their say and what they research and decode, they can output as well. You know, which you've seen what we do over the years as a team, we work brilliant together in solving this. You can find us, uh, I'm going to always tell people to go to our discord at the moment until we get up and running we do want a website we do want to get onto other platforms uh, i do have more free time on my hands coming up so yeah we're going to get busy and we're, we're going to kick ass again like we used to we're just being tied up with real life events going on uh, i gotta yeah. share your discord uh link so i'll drop that in the show notes as well you know i'm on discord with some of my some of the projects I work on, but what a terrible name for a platform. <laughs> <laughs> it is, isn't it? <laughs> that doesn't sound very nice place, does it? No. <laughs> Actually, we have a you good know, laugh. We have a good laugh and I would discard, you know, I do promote a bit of humor in there because you're going to need it. 
Well, and it's a it's actually a beautiful technological platform and allows you to do a lot in there. That's why I really liked it until they kicked us off for medical misinformation. Yeah, yeah, I got that as well. And people have been threatened to lose their accounts and all kinds. So we, you know, I just renamed that room to a uh, to nature and advised people not to, you know, mention it. We know it's bullshit. We don't need to talk about it, do we? We know what the agenda is. We know what they're doing. We're not blind. Yeah, you don't want to lose your um your server on Discord because when ours got wiped, every account associated with with it was also deleted. Ooh, so I, didn't, I literally I didn't actually know yours was, yours was deleted. Yeah, so the Alpha Vedic Discord was the first thing we ever set up, and because I was a big Discord nerd from working in decentralized. I wonder, I wonder why I didn't see your avatar around. <laughs> Yeah, and because of that, I we were all wiped, and uh, we had pe people that were running their own servers that were wiped off and couldn't get back into it. Yeah, and Cordal, it was insane. I mean, with one strike of a button, right, to just do that. So I refused to go back on there. Um, I am actually though back on there. I just refused to set up another um, server, but I will find you guys and I'll join that server. Uh, and we recommend everybody else that's being drawn to this, please, because. The one thing I, the, one of the things I really like about what you guys are doing is you're open to have anybody join in the work. Of course, it's not like oh, yeah, feeling yeah, of yeah. ownership. It's it's open source um, it is, yes. in how you do it. Yeah, we were we were closed shop at first because we know there's a lot of disinfo disinfo agents in this arena. Um, so we we kept it to ourselves. We kept yeah, you you understand why you know you've got to stop people getting in and disrupting things and trying to change your opinion on things. Yeah, you know, it does happen. We have had it happen. Um, but but since the... we released Operation Rainbow Warrior, that's an invite to the, old, to the whole world. Come in, join in with this and tell us what you find. And, and be surprised yourself at what you find. You're going to get a shock at what you find. You, but you've set a certain framework around APM that people know they have to already have done the work to have the base understanding to fit that. So to come in as a misinformation agent, you'd be pretty obvious right out of the gates. Because Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we have laid the foundations now as far as we're concerned for buildings. You know, we've got the, the map, the correct map and how they how they've, uh, how they fake it and fake the globe and how this construct works, how this technology works, uh, where you can reference it, like Walter Russell's work, Nikola Tesla's work, all of the sciences come from this. So it's, it gets easier and easier. You know, this gives people, even like yourselves, the chance to add more information to this, you know, information, another piece of the jigsaw. It all builds up to a bigger picture. You know, we haven't got the full picture, but we have got the foundations to put all these extra pieces on now. Indeed. Well, hey, this has been another amazing chat. We got to have you back again sooner than two years, whatever it was, <laughs> yeah. two and a half years or something. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining us today. You always blow our minds. <laughs> you know, minds <laughs> melt in a bit. Got a bit of a yeah, patty melt yeah. today. Yeah, um, you know, I hope I explained it correctly and, and it come across properly to everyone. You know, I, I, no, am, it was, it was I am represent the whole team of people. It's not just my research. It's everyone's research that's involved in this, including all the new people coming from in the Operation Rainbow Warrior program. They're now APM researchers themselves. You guys are. Well, I look forward to <laughs> following your future decodings, and thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, guys, and we'll definitely do it again. Have a fun night, both. And thanks to all the viewers for listening. Uh, I hope I didn't shock you too much. And definitely come into our Discord and join in with Operation Rainbow Warrior. You're going to love it. Beautiful. Yeah, we had a pop in chat today. It was really fun. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, if you're listening to this on a podcast, you're going to want to find us on YouTube, Rumble, Unite.Live, or Odyssey, or uh, Fakebook, uh, or to, to watch the stream because you want to see the visuals for sure. And then head on over to FPV's, um, their YouTube, and then we'll have their Discord in the chat. Or excuse me, in the show notes. Thanks, everybody. Uh, have a beautiful day. Remember Music in Sky, June 20th through the, through the 24th. Uh, just lineup is just a power pack lineup, and we're excited to uh, all hang in person there. Love you all. Remember to get outside, get your feet in the dirt, go plant something, go hug a tree, go find a rainbow. And uh, we'll see you next week for another episode of AlphaCast. Love you all. Have a good one. Bye.